We're starting a new ser- uh, sermon series for, the, for this month, month of December. Thank you. I'm in the middle now. Perfect. Thank you. Give it up to Cassandra. Thank you, Cassandra, for helping me with that. <laughs> and so the, the series, the theme for this month is the bells of Christmas. Say the bells of Christmas. The bells of Christmas. I mean, what does that mean? And so we're going to talk about that today and the next couple of weeks. And then, of course, leading up to Christmas Eve, really excited about that. So this morning, I have a virtual bell and also a real bell. I want to introduce to you my virtual bell. This is actually a phone app called Phone Bell. So, yeah, so welcome to the 21st century. And so everything is artificial intelligence. So this is my bell app today. And then also, I do have a physical app with me. I'm sorry, a physical bell with me today. This is what I would call a real bell. So this is, this is, we have a dog named Gumba, which means skunk in Portuguese, by the way. Gumba is almost three years old. And Rylan, from the very beginning we got Gumba, hey, we have a theme today. It's all about dogs. How about that? And so Gum, uh, Ryland trained Gumba early on. And this bell, I mean, if you could actually see it, it's pretty smashed and beat up and Ever since Gumba was a young one, he came into our house, this is the bell that, that is attached to the door, the back door, and then he, if he wants to go out, he rings this bell, which is kind of cool. Um, anybody have dogs that are trained that way? Ringing bell? Okay. All right. A few of you. All right. So this is my physical bell that I'm going to use, my real bell, today. So I have the virtual version of my bell today. And the real bell, all right? Bells of Christmas. Bells are one of the common symbols of Christmas because all through history, bells have been used to play the role of the angels on that first Christmas. Bells ring forth the message of joy. And the bell and the babe of Bethlehem are linked in many ways. I mean, just think about it. How many songs, endless songs that, ha- that mention the word angel in it? Anybody help me out? I'm sorry, not angel. Bells. Silver bells. What else? Jingle bells. What else? Carol of the bells. Is that all? I think there's many of them, but you know, we're put on the spot. I get it. Ring the, okay, ring the bells of, ring the hall. Oh, ring the bells. Deck the halls. Oh, that's, okay. Anyways, <laughs> starting to be derailed. Okay, moving on. So, anyways, the point is, is that, you know, bells are, are a serious theme of Christmas. The wise men were led by sight to the Savior. God gave them a star, but the shepherds were what? They were led by sound. God gave them a message through the ear. And so both are part of God's methods, and both of them touch us all in all the sights and sounds of Christmas. They convey a message of good news. Jesus was God's word, and he came to be heard. He came to sound forth a message of joy and liberty, and hope, and love, and peace. Luke chapter 2, familiar passage, of course, during this time of year. We're going to start in verse 8. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. The title of my message this morning is just a simple question. What is the sound of Christmas? Let's pray. God, thank you as we celebrate and recognize during this time of year, Lord, your coming from heaven down among us, to be among us, to bring a message of hope and peace and joy and most of all, love. You are our Savior, and we thank you, God, for that. I pray that as we open your word today, that your Holy Spirit would would encourage us and challenge us and bring us a renewed sense of joy. God, we give you permission to do that work. I pray that you would get me out of the way today, and may your Spirit lead and bring illumination and guidance to what we need to hear and respond to today in Jesus' name. Amen. And so the question is this, what is the purpose of a bell? Uh, I can ask it this way, what is a bell's life purpose? I don't know if you've even even considered or asked that question, but this morning we're going to all ask, what is a bell's life purpose? Why were they even created? Well, here's the thing. Bells are specifically used to get your attention. Why? Because something important precedes the sound. And this is why we're seeing it all over these days because it's the Christmas season. This is why the Salvation Army rings a bell. It's to get your attention. You're you're focused on going into Target to get something, husbands for your wife, and you don't have... (laughs) <laughs> That's my wife cheering. And you know how it is, guys. We, you know, we're focused on just going and, and conquering and getting what we've been, we've been asked and tasked to do. But there's bells along the way, and that's the Salvation Army saying, hey, you can help this person or that person over here. So bells are used specifically to call people to the awareness of something they should be in on. This is the purpose of bells. And so when you think about it, as I was putting this message together, man, there's so many things I think that we we forget in terms of what, you know, how the bell is used. And and, and there's like bells going off all the time in our lives and around us. Probably not so much now, but I mean, where will tonight's now? So we might have to integrate this into our family. It's the dinner bell. It's the supper time bell. Anybody was raised that way? Oh, Cassandra. Hey, really? Like, Cassandra, it's dinner time. Uh, we have to, we'll have to implement that. That's good. Like with, when our kids are out on the pond fishing, we'll just have to do that. Or if you don't have that, you can just do that. All right? Okay. Moving on. The doorbell and the phone bell are meant to call you to attention, to the fact of what? That, well, someone is trying to contact you. The school recess bell. Now, this is interesting because there's two drastically different responses to the school recess bell. For the kiddos, they say, bummer, recess is over. And for the teachers, they say, dang, my break of peace and quiet is over. Two different responses, same bell. So I've said this before, that my office is in Galt at a coffee shop, and I just noticed this actually just this week putting this message together, and this has been my office now for a little over a year, and I I didn't even know that they had a bell that sits right above the door entrance, and uh, I'm like, wow, and then now that I notice it, it's like it's going off all the time, so when people come in, they say, hey. New customer, right? Or when they leave. So it's constantly ringing, bringing attention to, in this case, I'm here and I'm going to get coffee. Or I'm here to say hi to my friends. The church bell is another kind of bell that calls you to the worship of God. 
And so you can see bells are literally integrated and saturated into our everyday lives. And if you didn't notice already, I'm telling you this week, you will notice all the bells, I promise. But Christmas bells are to call your attention to this fact that God has done something in the gift of his son, which is the basis for a never-ending joy. Now think about that, a never-ending joy. Joy that never runs out. Joy that overflows. Joy that never runs dry. Their sound is to remind us that Jesus lifted man from the pit of despair to the pinnacle of delight. Christmas bells is a call to attention of God's unending, unconditional, full of 100% grace kind of love. And so what is the sound? What, what is this sound that we're talking about? We see it here in Luke chapter 2. Do not be afraid, the angel of the Lord said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, Jesus, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. There is something unique about a bell that draws our attention. Don't you think that the creators of Facebook and other social media outlets know this? You may not know that when you get notifications on your Facebook page, it's actually a bell. Now you're going to go back and check that and fact check it. I guarantee that that's what it is. So notifications is a bell on Facebook. And how many of you have seen the Netflix series, The Social Dilemma? The Social Dilemma. And this really, I mean, it's, it, it really just talks about how even the sound of a bell and a ring that we, even when we're sleeping, we have that next to our bed stand, or we're in the middle of something, maybe conversing face-to-face, one-on-one, and suddenly a bell goes off on our phone, and it's like dopamine. Like, oh my gosh, I got to get to this, I got to do this, and this bell, I mean, truly, uh, The Social Dilemma, if you haven't seen it, talks a lot about the addictions that we find ourselves in terms of even a bell that happens on our social media. But this Christmas, my hope and prayer is that we would truly know the sound because there is a sound, listen, there is a sound above all other sounds to not only get your and I's attention, but to bring you and I to our knees. The posture to surrender and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. My hope and prayer is that this Christmas will be different than any other one. We'll understand the sound of Christmas. And so what is it about this particular sound? What is it about this message of Christmas that we need to be aware of now and beyond? The first thing I want to talk about is this. God does not heap more fear. He seeks to eliminate it. One more time. God doesn't heap more fear. He seeks to eliminate it. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. What was their response? They were terrified. Now, to me, when I read terrified, that's kind of more than just being startled. I mean, the angel of the Lord appears, and there is a fear, this gripping, this consuming fear, terrified. And so what we see what happens, but the angel reassured them. Say reassured. This is the response. Don't be afraid, he said. And this morning, I need to say this to all of you here physically and also those who are online. I need to reassure you, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I'm ringing the bell to tell you to draw your attention to not be afraid. I, I, I think we got to sit in that for just a little bit. Why? Well, this is why, because it is significantly different. There's a significant difference in what the world's concern and not-so-subtle message is today. It's their bell. And this is not a them-versus-us thing. 
I just want to address that there is also a bell that's very loud ringing today, and it is the world's not-so-subtle message. Their sound, the sound of the world's messaging is this. Be more fearful. Be more fearful. The world is ending tomorrow. Don't have peace. Be more fearful. You need to know that there is a not-so-subtle message in conflict or in competition with the message of Jesus. Do not be afraid. And so when the angel showed up, there was immediate fear. And what was spoken so that it would be heard is this, do not be afraid. Let me ask this question. How many of you have the ring alarm system at your house? The ring? And this is not at all to put anybody down in terms of if you've got a ring alarm system, amazing. So it's not good or bad. I'm just saying this. The world is capitalizing on fear. In fact, the world makes a lot of money on our fear. It's true. And I understand that there's, there's something to be said about having the safety measures in place. But when you think about the ring alarm system, it's like, it's kind of cool. My sister has one of those. And like she'll be, like in Thanksgiving, she was at our house. Or I'm sorry, we weren't all in Arizona. And then she was like, oh, there's somebody, there's somebody ringing on the doorbell. Oh, oh, there's somebody there. Oh, it's just the mailman. Like so, so, but here's the crazy thing about the ring or any other alarm system, any idea how much or what is the industry profit of home alarm systems? What's the annual? Does anybody know? Does anybody want to take a stab at it? Home alarm systems, it's a $31 billion industry annually. So the point here is that the world knows fear, fear, fear. How many times, by the way, is fear not or do not be afraid mentioned in the Bible? Anybody know? It's 365. That's a reminder every single day. I don't think, by the way, that's, that wasn't intentional. That was actually very intentional. Do not be afraid. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God will never give you the spirit of fear. Say never. For God will never give you the spirit of fear. But the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. The second thing about this particular sound or the message of Christmas that we need to be aware of now and beyond is this. Christmas is a message of peace and joy. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people, the angel of the Lord said. And so the sound of Christmas is of peace and liberty and freedom and and love, and, and joy, and maybe you could just keep going right on to the fruits of the Spirit. This is the sound of Christmas. And I want to remind us that more than ever before, we are desperately longing for peace, and hope, and joy, and love, and victory. The sound of Christmas provides all of that. If you have the peace of eternal life in Christ, you have a bell to ring. If you possess hope in Christ, when many feel hopeless, you have a bell to ring. If the joy of Christ resides deep in your soul, despite joylessness, you have a bell to ring. If you've experienced victory over illness, addiction, loss, grief, you have a bell to ring. And like we started this service this morning, even if you're struggling... We say that no perfect people are allowed here at Living Water Church. This means that everybody is welcome. The ground to the cross is level. And so we need to come together uh, encouraging one another even when we're struggling. I'm not sure if anybody in the medical field can verify this today. But I'm told that there is a bell that happens in the hospital for those who are going through oncology treatments, cancer treatments, what, uh, what they do in North America is when you've gone through your final treatment, they line up, all the nurses line up and all the doctors line up, 
And what do they do when you go through? They, they're ringing a bell. Celebration. There's joy. There's a completion of something. And apparently it's common practice in, uh, here in North uh, America. Can people ver anybody verify that? Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So you all know that I was in the hospital. Uh, very scary in terms of the doctor's diagnosis of being very ill, even to the point of death. And I want to say that my story of healing in the hospital is a message. <clears throat> and there were many times when the message <laughs> was quite the opposite of what I ended up experiencing. And in the moment, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of concern and tears and, and what does this now mean? And me being in the hospital and then the news getting to my wife and to my kids I mean, a lot of anxiousness, the opposite of peace. And I'm here to tell you that even though the message was the opposite, and this is not to, uh, not to draw any kind of theological conclusion to those who actually do pass, I'm just here to tell you that uh, my healing story is, is, is a testimony of God saying to me, and he did, I'm not done with you, son. You still have a, ring, a bell to ring. I'm not done. And so I'm here to testify among many of you who have experienced, uh, gone through experiences health-wise in your life where the doctor's prognosis was the opposite of what you were hoping for. But you're here today, and so praise God. We have the message today of hope, peace, joy, and victory. So go, therefore, and share because God is not done with us yet. And so we can praise God in this Christmas season with a lot of, the, in the busyness and the hectic hustle and bustle and all the things that we are going to and the scheduled things, and et cetera, we can, in the midst of it, have hope and peace and joy. The final point I want to make about this particular sound that we need to be aware of, the sound of Christmas in this season, is this. The real sound of Christmas is good news. Say good news. Good news. Doesn't that just feel, that's like water being poured on a hot summer day over you when you just say, good news. Why? Because breaking news is often the opposite of good news. How about some good news for once? I want to read yet again this over us this good news that came from the angel of the Lord over 2,000 uh, years ago and to bring us the peace that comes from his word and promise, this is the good news. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. This is good news. There is never a better sound than this. The Savior, Messiah, is born. He will save humanity. He will save me from separation from God. What an incredible gift. How can I ever repay it back? You can't. It's done. He's done it. And so we have a bell to ring in our own personal lives, if that's you. And we also have a bell to come alongside people who have not yet heard the sound to say there is good news. You know, it never gets old sharing my testimony or sharing the, my story of when Jesus, the Savior, pursued me and drew me to his great love and saved me. And I was 12 years old, and I didn't have much history in terms of life and, and, and all of that, but certainly I saw it through my father, who at, in his mid-30s had basically just, just said, I'm going to save myself, and whatever that looks like, I'm just going to enjoy life. I think, it, I think his, if he had a shirt and he wore it back then, it would say, YOLO, you only live once. And so make the most of, of, of this life, party until you can't party anymore. Get above and achieve, even if you step on people as fast as you can. 
You can, you can uh, even bypass close relationships within family to get what you want. And this was my father saving himself. But in the end, I, you know, I, I respected my father. I, I looked up to him. And, and man, so much so that he had to come and admit to the family, I have succeeded in so much in my life, but this one thing I failed, and that is in my family. And so he and my mom were in this process of having a divorce. And they sat, uh, he sat me down and said, who do you want to live with? And when I was raised, I don't know if you were raised this way, but I was raised that if you look in an, in an, in an elder person's eyes, that's disrespect. That's how, I was, that's how I was raised. But I looked at him in the, in, straight in the eyes, I mean straight to his soul, and said, I shouldn't have to make that decision because I love you both. And it was like, I mean, I said that, and I was like, what's the punishment going to be? The next day was Sunday, and he was looking in the yellow pages. Believe it or not, there was something before Google. The yellow pages. How many of you want to admit that you are, you are an era of yellow pages? That should be all of you. Most of you. <laughs> the young kids are like, what are you talking about? Yellow pages? Why do they call it the yellow pages? It's because they were yellow. All right. So <clears throat> moving on. So <clears throat> looking in the yellow pages, and he said, we're going to church today. And I, I, at 12 years old, I have to say, like, we're going to what? Like, what is that? Well, we're just going to go to a church service. And at the time, it was the largest church in America called the Crystal Cathedral. And we attended it. And I, I tell you, you know, back in the, the six to eight weeks that we were as a family going to church service, I don't remember any of the songs. I do not remember the sermons. And so it's okay if, even if you don't remember this sermon. But one thing is true. I do remember going to Del Taco as a family and it was almost like I was having out-of-body experiences like, oh, this is what family looks like. This is what mom and dad interacting looks like. It's kind of peaceful in Del Taco. And, and uh, fast forward, God radically saved my dad on the 99 freeway driving from Southern California to Northern California where we moved in 1984 to Galt. There were more cows then than people. And Literally, God struck him, and he pulled over and weeped and said, I don't even know who I'm praying to, but God, help me and save me. On the 99 freeway in 1984 in October. One month later, my dad, where it was not even a year before, saying, who do you want to live with? We're, our family, we're done. Was in November of 84, where God saved my sister and I. My dad got to lead me to the Lord. I, I got to experience a beginner's, a beginner's prayer. I was saying, God, save me. I, I can't save myself. I, I mean, you're, you're obviously doing something in my father. If you can change him, you can change anybody. And then a month later, my mom comes to faith in Christ. The real sound of Christmas is good news. And we need God's help in this season to get past the distractions the fear, the fear mongering, and the and the and that just be fearful. Don't have peace. We need to know what the real sound is, and that needs to grab a hold of us. Because when I read Isaiah nine six through seven in closing, come on up, Cassandra. This is what it says. And if you need to, you can close your eyes from any distractions that may come now. Isaiah nine six to seven says this. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David from all, for all of eternity the passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Let's stand and pray. In our response time this morning, we never want to take for granted the time that we get to be together. We get to literally be together. It's like I, I think what COVID has done for us is to say, man, it's so easy to take things for granted. Man, for us to be together on this particular Sunday, 
We want to capitalize on if God is moving in your heart, we want to come alongside of you and continue to pray with you and for you. And so we'll have a team of people back there. And, and, and I just say this, like these people who pray, things happen. Like I, I'm not trying to get mystical or anything. I'm just, I'm just trying to say like God has given them the, the gift of intercessory prayer. And so if you're in a place right now where the peace thermometer is just up and down, come and, 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 and receive prayer. If you have somebody in your life who, who you know in this season like needs Jesus, they're doing everything in their lives to save themselves, please come and, and respond. And, and we want to have people who, who want to come alongside of you. It's a family member or maybe a, one of your kids or, or, or a neighbor or a coworker. We want to come alongside of you and pray. Or anything that, may, that God may be doing in your heart, we want to we wanna walk with you. And so, Father, thank you. We have a bell to ring. God, the good news is the Savior is born. And God, we can say this emphatically, even during this season. That Jesus came as a baby, but he is now king. We submit our lives to you, God. We surrender to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we believe that you've got a plan and a purpose in our lives because of what you did on the cross. It didn't end there. And so help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Respond now.